asking that. Do you think it's exponential growth? Yes, ma'am. Hello? Okay, just keep saying yes, ma'am. Okay, now watch. In grade 10, you only had y equals to a times your base to the x plus q. That's what you had in grade 10. I would say 90% of the time that a was either a plus one or a minus one. So you might not even remember seeing that. But a typical example, grade 10, you would have like two to the x minus four. Okay, am I right? That's kind of what you had in grade 10 for the exponential graph. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now, all I want to say is there is an A. The A is the number in front of this. This is your base. So the base, B for base, is the number that has the exponent. Now, you see, in this example, there, there is an A, but it is a ghost plus one. So you've got one times that value. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the number in front of the base could be a five. Or, and in grade 11, it's more often not just a ghost plus or minus one. Are you with me like lab chops? Okay. To say yes? Yes, ma'am. No? Cool, cool, cool. Now listen, this graph only has one asymptote. All right, are you all listening to what I'm saying? It has one asymptote. And even the grade 11 one is gonna have one asymptote. It's always that value. So it is y equals to that value, all right? So if they say write the equation of the asymptote, there's only one that's exponential. Now, I promise you for fun in cycle tests, I have often for grade 11s given them um, an exponential and I say write down the equation and I put an S in a bracket of the asymptote and I put an S in the bracket. I'm tricking them. And I can't tell you how many of them put them in a vertical asymptote. So, you know, you, if you get tricked, if it's exponential and they say write the equation like this, look, equation, like that. That means there could be one or more. But obviously, this graph with the x and the exponent only has one. So if they do do the equations of the asymptotes like that, they're trying to trick you. You don't get tricked. You just say, I know it is y. It's always horizontal. And it's the q value. Now, what's going to happen in grade 11? I'll quickly show you this. I just want you to see we're going to have still some number in front of the base. And then we're going to have x plus or minus a number. That's what's going to change. You just had x last year. And then plus the q. Now, because of bringing in a number here, I'll show you how it works. It just means we're going to have horizontal shifting. Okay, uh, doesn't matter if you can't even read that. The horizontal shifting is going to be affected by this number next to the x in the exponent. Uh, the q always gets affected with vertical shifting. Because if I have an asymptote of minus four, but I say shift this graph up one unit, well then the asymptote would be y equals minus three. So obviously that Q, and you've done an assignment on functions, and I think you've noticed by now in all the graphs, have you noticed that the Q affects the vertical shifting and normally the P, have you noticed the horizontal? Can anyone confirm that they've noticed that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Brilliant. Now, when you're in grade 10, I know the grade 10 teachers, they love plotting. So they probably said, just plot it, plot it, plot it. You know what I'm going to say? No, 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 no. That's such a waste of time. And also, I told you in the exams, if you look at a grade 11 external exam, or if you look at, for example, a matric final, there's very few graphs you have to draw. It's 90% interpretation. So the people who plot, don't know what to do when they're given um, a picture of, of, of the graph because they don't know, like if they say, right, the axis of symmetry, like I've explained that's the x value of the turning point of a parabola. But what I'm saying, if you were a plotter, you might not have known that. 
or if they said, if it's a sad parabola, you know, what is, write down the maximum uh, value, which you should know is the y value of the turning point, that it would, whatever that is, let's say it's four, let's pretend, uh, and the people who plot can't go backwards. So that's why I'm anti-plotting. The only time I plot is with trig graphs, because it really, your calculator is actually made for trig graphs. So when we do trig graphs, I'll show you, your calculator is made for it. But something like this, no, 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 no. Now, first of all, let's just say we're looking at this great 10 example right here. If the A is positive, so you've got to look at your A and you've got to look at your base, right? So uh, the B is the base. Okay, wait, I'll, I'll color code it. So that's your base and I'll make the A blue, except for here I did the... Okay, I'm just, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, keep the same color coding. Okay, so do you all agree in this example, the A here is a ghost plus one times, here the base is two to the exponent of X. So if X is an exponent, it is your um, exponential equation. So you know it's my exponential graph. So X would be in the exponent. Component. And this graph, as I said, has one asymptote. So if I was asked to draw this, the first thing is you draw your asymptote. Y equals minus 4. Remember your x-axis is y equals 0. So do you agree you would go down to where you have minus 4? Again, you don't need to draw these to scale. An asymptote, if you remember, must always be dashed. Always dashed. And you would label that, that is the y equals to minus 4. Now in grade um, 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 10, uh, you just had, okay, normally a ghost 1 or a ghost minus 1, but there is an A, and you had a base like that just to the x. There was no um, plus or minus a number up there, and then minus 4. So all you would do, if you had to draw this graph, is I just, I want you to get um, the x and y intercept. So to get the x intercept of any graph, you know you let y be naught. So if you let y be naught, you would have got that. Then for x, you would bring the minus four over, and then you see you just get an exponential equation. And you know with exponential equations, you've got to get your bases the same, all right? And then you can drop the base and equate the exponent. So I know it's cutting the graph at where x is 2 and y is 0. Uh, um, that's your x. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tanaka. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So that what, the, the equation that you put that they count for also x I plus p. Okay, hold on. Okay, we're back. Um, Tanaka, um, in this example, it's plus naught here. In grade 10, you see, you never had a plus. In grade 11, you might have like y equals to 2 times 3 to the x plus 1 plus 4. I'm just kind of making up an example. So you see, we're going to have horizontal shifting coming in in grade 11. But before I do the grade 11, I just want to revise one from last year in grade 10. Does that answer your question, Tanaka? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank and you, ma'am. Pleasure. And listen, I'm going to get your file ready this weekend. You have my, look, here. I've bought you, Tanaka, a flip file. So I'm going to print all the first term notes for you. And then I will phone you and then your dad can collect it. Because you, you were in hospital in the first term. So you need um, all the notes. Are you with me, Lamb Chop? Oh. Thank you, ma'am. I'm definitely doing it this weekend. I was very busy last weekend with moderating the matric prelims. Anyway, I want to show you how I could have drawn this grade 10. I can literally do it in one minute, 30 seconds. Before you even put that on your calculator, I could actually draw this. So I would start by doing my horizontal asymptote. You get the x-intercept by making y naught, and it just becomes an exponential equation. And then to get your y-intercept, 
you do that by letting x be naught. So do you agree in that example, you have y equals 2 to the naught minus 4. Now any base to the power of naught is just 1, except for naught to the naught is not 1, it's undefined. But any other number to the power of naught, if you remember, is 1. So 1 minus 4, do you see a y-intercept is going to be minus 3. So it's cutting the y-axis there, and um, x is naught and y is minus 3. Now, as, just listen carefully to what I want to say to you, as long as the a value, this a value here in blue is positive, because it will change if it's negative. Let me just find my pen. So as long as the A is positive, bigger than naught, okay, not negative, if your base is bigger than one, then I have a little story. Just think of it like this. Wherever your asymptote is, if your base, that number, is bigger than one, the airplane flies towards the sun. So in other words, you would know the shape. So if your base is bigger than one, it grows, just think your exponential is going up to the sun. But that's if the A is positive. If the A was negative, in other words, you had a minus two to the X, let's say uh, minus four or whatever, it just means it will be reflected about the X axis. So if you know that the base is bigger than one, the airplane flies to the sun, but if there's a minus in front, it's just reflected about the x-axis. So everything will be upside down. That's all the A does, all right? But having said that, because the base is bigger than one, and I've got everything I need, then you see this is going to be my graph. So you've got to go through there, through there, and up, and then you've got to come, okay, it's not my best diagram, you've got to come now towards your asymptote. You've got to get closer and closer and closer, but you must not touch that asymptote. Now, how they mark it is they, they won't take off a mark because Nikki, Mrs. Holmo kind of, that's why I was drawing pencil. Okay, that's better. But what I'm saying, they're going to mark a mark for your asymptote, a mark for your x-intercept as a coordinate, and a mark for your y-intercept as a coordinate, and a mark for your shape. Now, the people who do this, they come in parallel like that. They're going to lose the shape mark because we will take it away because you're not approaching your asymptote. I've said this before with the, um, some of you are going to do what I call a crash, right? You touch that asymptote, you've lost the mark for the shape, all right? So you've got to make sure any graph with an asymptote, you come closer and closer and be careful what you do. Okay, I'm just checking we still have the board. We do. And as I say, I've had a lot of students in exams. I'll show you what they do. They kind of rush this and they do this. Now, if you look at that, if I had to like extrapolate this graph, look what it's doing. It's actually, look, it's going away from the asymptote. Just that little error will lose them the shape mark. So I'm just saying, and uh, I think I told my class this before, in 2017, my top student, Mahir Ambalal, got 99% for his matric final. But in his first term cycle test, he lost one mark because his arrowhead literally touched. And I, I took off the mark. I hope that's why he didn't lose his 100%. He said he's never had a teacher as strict. But I am very vigilant about asymptotes. Are you all with me? Is that how you drew your exponential in grade 10, guys? Just I, I want three people to say yes or no. Anyone? Yes. Who, okay, who are you? Uh -huh. But they didn't take off the oh, mark. Is that, so you were taught your asymptote and you were taught to get algebraically the x-intercept and the y-intercept and then you do it like that yeah it was brilliant with the whole long process because i was bad at plotting yeah i mean plotting is such a freaking waste of time you also have a function on your calculator i don't know if you know this where you can actually type in your equation you can even put an x there and it gives you all the coordinates but i'm saying even that 
will take longer than me doing that. Is that thing is so easy and so fast. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I only have to cut two points. Okay. I... Were, were other students only taught functions last year by plotting? Can anyone say, yeah, we just had to plot every single one of them? Because I know, I remember seeing the booklet and it was full of freaking plotting. So, you know, I hate plotting. So is there any student here that only drew all their graphs last year by plotting? I, I drew my graph by knowing the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Me too. Okay, well, I'm so proud of you because that's what we need to do for the grade um, 11 one. All right? So now I'm going to hopefully have enough data to show you one grade 11 example. Obviously, one is not enough, but I'm just going to show you how it changes everything slightly, slightly, okay? There is still only one asymptote. Do you understand that? Now, I'm going to send this note to you. Just tell me if the screen goes black. But they are now going to say, let's say, draw this graph. Let's say they say, draw, look, five dot. That means times two to the x plus two plus, let's say, two. So do you understand? The first thing I'm going to do is my asymptote, all right? So look here, y equals to plus two. That is your one and only asymptote. And you have to label it. So that is y equals to two, right? Are you all still there? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma now, look here. Do you agree the A value is positive and the base is bigger than 1? So I really know that's the shape. So I really know if that's the shape, there's going to be no x-intercept. I bet you I'm right. I'll prove it to you. All right? Okay? But there will definitely be um, a y-intercept. So let's do the y-intercept first. So look here, in order to um, look carefully to get the uh, y-intercept, um, you know that we let x equals to naught, right? So we have y equal to 5 times 2. Now you just make the x naught, but you've still got a plus 2 there, and then there's the plus 2. So y equals to 5 times, so that's just 2 to the 2, which is 4, and then plus 2. So but maths, 5 fours of 20 plus 2, so it's cutting the y-axis of 22. Now listen, I'm not drawing this to scale. There is no way in hell that I'm going up to freaking 22. I know that's 2, but as long as you label it, look, x is naught, y is 22. The base is bigger than 1. The airplane is flying to the side. Can you see that why there will be no x-intercept? That's the worst Sorry, I'm doing this too fast. I'm just scared my data's going to go. But I don't want to be a hypocrite. Now, I've proved to you why there's no x intercept You can see it's not going to go below that line. So if I can just do it up here. To get your x-intercept, you be everybody, we let y equals to naught. So you've got naught equals 2, and we have 2 there. So we've got 5 times 2 to the x plus 2 plus 2. And then that becomes now minus 2. Now, I want everyone to understand this concept. There is no value for x in the exponent that will make this right-hand side negative. Because if x is naught, you've got 5 times 2 to the 2, right? We know that. We've done that. But um, if x is minus 1, you see that just becomes 5 times 2 to the... So minus 1 plus 2 is 1, all right? Um, if x is, let's say, minus 3, then I know you're going to get a minus 1, but then that is just 5 times 1 over 2, which means you get 5 over 2. So if x is minus 4, you would just get um, 1 over 4, so 5 over 4. But do you understand? You're never going to get that to be negative. And that is why they're not applicable. There are no x-intercepts. But now, listen carefully. I've always told, sorry, this is very, I'm very, I'm rushing it, no x-intercepts. 
I've always told my students that when you draw any graph, okay, you get a mark for your asymptote, you get a mark for your y-intercept, normally for my x-intercept and the shape. But what they will, if there is no x-intercept, you need to have one other point, just one other point. So choose your own value for x, but obviously guys, um, you know, don't, uh, uh, or, you know, like, uh, uh, just make it something easy. I'm, I'm going to make, what was my graph again? My graph f of x, the equation was 5 times 2 to the x plus 2 plus 2. So let's just make x1. So when you make x1, you, agree, you get the output. What is the output? The output is the y value of the coordinate when x is 1. So you're going to have 5 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 2, respect your bond maths. So we're going to get a number 5 times 8 plus 2. It's going to be a big number. So when x is 1, 5 eighths, if I last time remember, are, are there 40 plus 2? 42. Am I right? Hello? Are you yes, still there? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand? So when x is 1, y is 42. So then you just go up to, when x is 1, I don't care if it's not drawn to scale, and you just go 1 and 42. So the only time, and then label your graph, please label it. Um, if there's no x-intercept, you need to have one other coordinate on your graph. This applies to a parabola, hyperbola, you name it. If there is no x-intercept, then just choose a very easy value for x, like one or minus one, and get the y value and just put another coordinate. Now that wasn't hard at all. Do you agree with me? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll try and do one more if I can. Um, if I might get cut off, I'm not sure. Um, let's just try. So I'm going to, you know what I actually want to do? I want to explain this to you. Let's say you've got y equals 2 to the x, just that. If I say what is the equation of the asymptote, who can tell me? If that's my equation, y equals 2 to the x, what is my equation of the asymptote? Quickly. y equals 0. Excellent. Because it's plus 0, that means y is 0. So let's just go back to this graph. Now watch how this works. If I say, will you take this graph, and we normally say translate. Translate is the correct word, but slide, you know, slide, shift. We used to those words. But if they say like shift your graph, look here, three units to the right. Now watch this. I want three units to the right. Then you go minus three. So again, because that's like an invisible bracket, you, it's opposite. So if I said to the left, you would go plus three. If I said and up by one unit, well then you're, you're gonna have plus one because everything moves up, which means your asymptote is going to change. So let's just look at another example. If I have y equals to 3 to the x plus 2, and I say shift this graph one unit to the left. Ma'am, you have 10 minutes left. Okay, one unit to the left and four up. Okay, one unit to the left. So that's going to be here. But to the left, I know left, you're thinking minus but you do the opposite sign, so it's x plus 1. That means I've shifted the original graph. It is going to all be shifted one unit to the left, but you understand that's how you would write it. It's the reverse of the direction, and the asymptote will change, because if I say, and four units up, and we'll, that is y equals to 2. If you add 4 to 2, you're going to get plus 6. So do you understand how I can shift a graph verbally by changing the P and the Q?
Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Brilliant. So let's just make sure you all got it. So if we've got y equals 2. Now, here the base is a fraction. So you have to put it in a bracket because if you don't, then that x is only pertaining to your numerator. So if your base... Yes, yes, Ma'am, your I'm screen sorry. is gone. Your video is gone. Okay, let's see if it comes back. Yep. I'm it's going back, back. to you. Um, all I was saying is, if your base is a fraction, you have to put it in a bracket. Do you understand that? Because if you have a base 2 yes, over 3, and you put the x there, you are only raising the numerator to x. So if your whole base is 2 over 3, do you understand? It's got to be in a bracket. If you are not seeing a number in front, that's your a, then you know your a is a ghost plus 1. Right? But you know the one we did, I've rubbed it out now, oh, there it is. Did you notice? It doesn't have to be 1 or minus 1. If here the a was 5. Right? But all I want you to say, let's say I want to shift this five units to the right and two down. Who can tell me what do I write here? X what? Five to the right. Do I go X plus five or X minus five? Minus. Thank you. So if you're going to the right, it's minus. So it's always reversed to what you think it is because there's an invisible bracket. And if I say two down, instead of y equals to naught being my asymptote, what will I have here? I'll have minus two. So that is vertical shifting, that is horizontal. So if they say shift this graph, okay? Now let's say they say, um, five units to the left, then you see you would add five and then the two fives cross, then you're back to just this. So I'm just trying to say to you that, um, you know, you've just got to understand the to the, you would go minus the five in the exponent. And if they said five to the left, you'd go X plus five. All right, now listen, I think literally, um, I have hopefully enough battery time. I want to just draw one more graph. Um, so if I get cut out, I'm sorry. I'm going to just try. At least I explained the shifting to you. Sorry, everything's a bit of a mess. I just feel, um, I've just done the washing up and the washing and the ironing and the cleanings <laughs> and the teaching of the matrix this morning. Oh, well, actually, that was a failure. Only five matrix came to school today. Can you believe that? Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Keep talking to me. Keep talking to me. Okay. Let's say I give you G of X. Let's say I give you minus 2 to the X plus 4 and then plus 8. Okay, what's the equation of my asymptote? You can tell me. You can tell me my equation of my asymptote. Y equals eight. How many you can't hear me? Or I can, but it's plus eight. Can't you see that, everybody? Can you still see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, talk to me, talk to me. Okay. Now I need my x-intercept. Let's see if there is an x-intercept. So we make y naught. So we get minus 2 to the x plus 4 plus 8. We bring this across. So now minus 8 would equal to minus 2 to the x plus 4. And they're both minus. So you can times it through. So 8 is just 2 to the 3. And I can get rid of the minuses on both sides. So now... You're literally going to have 3 equals x plus 4. So x is going to be minus 1. So it's cutting the y-axis here. Um, the x-axis, the x-axis, I apologize, at minus 1 naught. Now, um, let's pick it at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept will let x be naught. 
So now we're going to have minus 2 to the naught plus 4. So we're going to get minus 2 to the just the 4. Naught plus 4 is 4 plus 8. So um, minus 2 to the 4 is um, 16 plus 8. So the y-intercept um, Sorry, I, I don't know why I did that error. I was going to say, where's my freaking variable? The y except is minus 8. You all see that? Which would be down there. Not minus 8. Now watch here. You're still there. Can someone just say yes? Yes. No? Right. Do you see the base is bigger than 1? So theoretically, the airplane flies to the sun. But that's only if the A is positive. If the A is negative, do you understand? We've got to reflect this. So do you understand why I know it's actually going to go look towards my asymptote through there? Okay, if you missed your dot, I tell my class all the time, just make your dot bigger. Okay? So when you panic me now, just come towards your asymptote, and that would be my graph G. So if the A is minus, then you see it's going to be a reflection. Not necessarily um, always about the x-axis, but it, uh, it's just going to go um, down. If, if you have a base that is a fraction, like that, so if your base is bigger than naught, smaller than 1, which would be a common positive fraction, not an improper, because 3 over 2 is bigger than 1, so 3 over 2 would still go that towards the sun. But a common fraction is, as you know, for example, where the numerator is smaller than the bottom, like 1 over 2 or 1 over 3 or 2 over 5, then because you guys hate fractions, and if you owned a, a jet plane, uh, my, uh, what is these things called? A drone. Uh, if you could, you would put the fraction in that drone and you would try and crash it towards the ground because that's how much you guys hate fractions. So all I'm saying, as long as the A is positive, if your base is a common fraction, then just think you want to crash it to the ground, all right? If the A is negative, then it would be there, like reflected. Are you with me? But obviously vertically shifted up, down, left, or right. So did today's lesson make sense to you? You have a minute, really? left, man. One minute, I made it. I would, do, I would go to your textbook, and I would now go to the section on hyperbola and exponential graphs, and I would, um, you'll find them under functions. Um, you can even go to parabolas. I, I would start reading through a textbook, try some of the examples. I'm sure they'll make you have examples in your grade 11 textbook where you're going to draw a few. So practice drawing a few. And then I'll see you tomorrow at quarter to 12.